um, now let's go to our first speaker. I hope Farani, are you ready? Hello, Farani. Can I make a little introduction for you? Sure. sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, Farani, together with uh, Yori Antar and Pascalis Krishno, co-founded Uma Nusantara, a movement that impacts the general architecture community in Indonesia through research, documentation, and preservation of Indonesian architecture. Their project on endangered Wairebo in Mangara, traditional house in Flores Island, won international and local awards, including 2012 Asia Pacific UNESCO Cultural Heritage Conservation Award, and Indonesian Architects Institute Award for Conservation. Bafarani, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ibulini, for such a great uh, introduction. Hi, Philip. Hi, Lee. Thank you for the honor to be in this forum. Uh, let me share. Do the share screen first, okay? Okay. It's all good. Yay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let me let me start the story of Uman Santara. So, thank you again uh, for having me here. I am uh, Farani Kosasi, one of the founder of Uman Santara. So, in uh, Indonesia, Uma means house because we are architects. So, houses is where our most of our houses is related to. So, therefore, the term Uma. And Nusantara is uh, the term uh, related to the Indonesian archipelago. And this is the Indonesian archipelago, as Ibulini said, more than 17,000 islands, more than 700 tribes. Uh, very diverse in terms of landscape, uh, biodiversity, as well as architecture. So, yeah, we can see here that from the east to the west, Indonesia has a very rich uh, culture in terms of architecture. But these days, uh, we can see more and more. Uh, we find out that more and more we are losing our traditional architecture. Some of them probably because they are. They, some people find it no longer relevant to this world, probably, and some find it too complicated to build such a such uh this shape and uh uh, types of architecture while all we know now is the minimalism for example so yeah uh we started to lose uh, uh more and more these days and we can see also changes happen in places like nias and sumba for example uh more use of the metal rules uh, which we know is not good for the environment as they reflect more heat to uh, the environment. So this is actually where our journey began. So as a young architects, we used to uh, we are uh, working for the uh, for a firm led by Mr. Yori Antar, also the founder of Umanus Antara. I think he's here today. Hi, Mas Yori. Uh, we have the annual trips, and that brought us to two thousand and eight where we accidentally end up in this journey to Wairabu. Why do I say accidentally? Because uh, while preparing for the trips, we only find one uh, image of this village state that it's in Flores. But while we arrived to that uh, island, to Flores, nobody knew about that village. So we were more intrigued to find out whether this village is truly exists or not. Uh, so after a very long journey, five hours, using a wagon, go inside uh, the forest, uh, the deep jungle, and then followed by five hours trekking to the top of the mountains across this kind of rivers, uh, we finally arrived to Wairabu village. So we were at that moment, we were very tired. We were soaking wet, it was raining, but I think the beauty of the architecture and the landscape and the warm welcome of the people were mind blowing. So after doing this kind of trips for several years, I think Wairabu uh, was uh, milestones for us. We stayed for one night uh, 
in that village and we talk a lot with the people with the villagers so and they told us the story like they said um they originally has seven conical houses if you can see in the top picture there are three uh square houses it used to be also the conical houses but they are uh, they decayed and then they fall, fell down and they don't have the resources the money to build the uh, to build them back to the original shape and at that year uh, two of the left uh, houses were also 70 years old so they are expecting uh, expecting them to fall down probably in one or two years time at that point so that make us think, you know, as a modern uh, architects uh, living in big cities, I mean, uh, can we do more? We like to visit this kind of places, you know, and take good pictures. They are very Instagrammable, for example, but can we do more as, a, as an architect? Can we take part in, in this preservation of the traditional architecture? So after going back, from the trip one year later we managed to set up our first uh, reconstruction project and as you can see that we learned a lot from the project so in this project we as an architect we act more like a project coordinator so we find the donors to support this reconstruction but we ask the people of Wairabo to be the main actor themselves to rebuild this uh, traditional ar architecture according to their original methods and techniques so that they can be uh, it can, uh, the whole process can be a transfer knowledge process for the younger generation of the villagers because in it is common in indonesia in this traditional uh, villages they don't have the the culture as we in modern days of documenting everything of writing everything in and turn it into books and data so uh, throughout every construction process like this one, uh, they actually learn and it is actually a transfer knowledge. We are saving another generation of this village that know how to build with such construction and what woods to use, uh, the, all the materials are different types of wood biodiversity around the area. And these are some of the documentation. It was amazing. As you can see, uh, we in Indonesia, in uh, most of our traditional architecture, we don't use dead joints. The kind of, you know, the dead joints is the kind of uh, joints like the uh, the one we use in concrete architecture today. That is, uh, yeah, that end. In Indonesia, that are very prone to earthquakes. Uh, this kind of tying uh, construction is commonly used. And that is made uh, that made our traditional architecture is more earthquake resilient. And other than that, they are built using a very diverse types of plants, and by again uh, learning how to build this kind of houses is a learning tools for the people, the local people themselves, to also uh, be aware and take uh, part in sustaining their uh, environment. And so in 2011, we managed uh, to assist the Wairabu uh, village to, to their original formation of seven houses. And in 2012, as Bulini said, uh, we proposed them to the UNESCO award. And yeah, we, we got the, the uh, UNESCO award in uh, cultural heritage preservation. And until today, Wairabu is still uh, spreading uh, they just been uh, acknowledged as number two in the most beautiful small towns in the world. So you should fi uh, visit them, Lini. Uh, hopefully, if you get a chance to visit Indonesia. So these are the graphics of the number of tourists. So now this, uh, so now Wairobo is uh, have a, a very good, a better economic growth. Uh, because they now can uh, can be the host for for a huge number of tourists and yeah they learn hospitality they they learn how to present their, their culture well and they they now uh, learn to they uh, day by day learn to be a better host for other people so yeah that's why 
and yeah after the this is actually this actually happens after the first phase that i uh the previous 2009 so started in 2010 the second phase of reconstruction we started to invite the students the modern students from the university uh, in big cities of Indonesia to join as a live-in students in the reconstruction process. So therefore, um, this process is not only uh, the transfer knowledge for the local, uh, for the younger generation of the local people, but also now as a learning tools for the younger generation in modern days. And as you can see here, these are the result of their documentation. And today, uh, this data, this documentations by the students can be a learning tools and hopefully uh, can be, you know, the, the tools for endless possibilities of learning, of development, learning uh, starting from our local wisdom into our modern day lives. And the journey with Wirebo has uh, brought us to finally establish this foundation, Uma Nusantara Foundation. In our main uh, aim is to preserve Indonesian architecture heritage. And these are some of the principles that we are a community based projects. So in every project, we want the people of the villagers uh, of the village, the local people uh, to be the main actors of the reconstruction themselves. And these are prioritized for the endangered types of Indonesian architecture built by local people and the local techniques, because we believe that there are more in our uh, local wisdom. There are, if we are talking about sustainability these days, uh, they prove to be sustained. They prove to, to uh, sustain through the task of hundreds of years and they still there until today to the through the earthquakes to through different uh uh after years after years they are here and last but not least we want them to be a learning tools for the young generation as well as the academic world and we have been doing this for almost uh to 50 15 to 16 years at this point and these are some of the points uh, of our projects uh all across indonesians but uh it's still a long journey to be said <laughs> these are some of the images of our uh, projects the top one is wirebo but also in other uh, islands of indonesia in sumatra in papua in sumba and as you can see um, the beauty of the traditional architecture is amazing and by uh, reconstructing them one after one, we are also actually preserving the culture, not only the physical building, but also the culture, the lives of the people, the, uh, and yeah, definitely all the local wisdom embedded in every uh, in every architecture. Uh, next, uh, for the second part, I want to tell you probably about uh, another one more projects. Uh, that can be uh, another uh, example of our uh, journey in Umanusantara. This one is Sumba. Again, this is the last image I uh, found out a few days ago. Sumba is there in the list, top 24 places to go in 2024. So it's number one in the, in the uh, list. And yeah, our journey in Sumba started uh, as a usual reconstruction project. So we reconstruct the traditional architecture of Sumba. But after a few years and recon a few reconstructions in Sumba, we found out that there are more uh, economic pressure in this island that forced the people to, to leave their traditional villages and go work in the bigger cities because they find more opportunities. And that's why then the, the houses that we reconstructed were, were left empty. So we kind of have to figure out uh, another way to not only to preserve the architecture, but also to support them in terms of economy, while at the same time, for sure, uh, preserving their culture. So therefore, we came out with another program called the Sumba Weaving Road, actually. It's a series of Sumba weaving houses 
because weaving is actually the one of the big potential uh, of Sumba, one of the most beautiful uh, in Indonesia, I think. And up to this year, we have uh, uh, we have made uh, sixteen uh, weaving houses. Different donors, different each area have different potentials, but yeah, they are in the potentials of uh, potential nodes of Sumba weaving. This is one of them. So this look like the common Sumba house, but uh, this uh, um, this is built uh, not for a living, not for uh, as a house for a common living, but as a uh, weaving houses. And yeah, so now that the weaving houses provide the common space for the villagers to weave together. And they now have a proper space to display their weaving and to introduce the, the process to the visitors coming to Sumba. So probably the question is like this, like if they have a, such a big potential in weaving, why are they still in economic challenge? up to those days. The answer is because they used to sell the, the weaving through third parties who brought the weaving in such a very low price for uh, from them. And then they also, sometimes they were also uh, sold in, you know, in as a folded cloth in stacks. So people can really see the beauty of this weaving. But our aim by these weaving houses is actually to provide them with a proper area, proper facilities to showcase this is not just another cloth. This is actually tr uh, truly an artwork. And these are the results uh, of the Sumba weaving houses. In some areas, we see that how they now starting to celebrate their weaving, started to celebrate their culture, very vibrant culture with the vibrant color. Uh, and yeah, in this uh, series of weaving houses, we also encourage them to get back to the use of natural coloring. So again, previously, because of the economic pressure, they started to use the artificial coloring to get here. Yeah, but now we, we encourage them to do uh, the natural coloring more because we, we told them that more people are actually attracted to your uh, original methods and uh, exploration of the natural coloring. These are some of the houses and the celebration around. As you can see now, uh, the, the, uh, the weaving cloth can be sold through the visitor in direct uh, discussion, in direct uh, interactions in, in which uh, it's not only sold as a piece of paper, but they can tell the story between each motifs, uh, between each uh, process, and who's the weavers of this uh, of this cloth, probably. So a lot of stories uh, behind every cloth. And in these uh, pictures, you can see most of the people in these pictures is not the local. So they are the younger generation in big cities of Jakarta that we are, uh, we bring them as a, in a trip to Sumba to visit these villages. And uh, I think this village, uh, uh, this image uh, reflects our joy in doing this preservation. We, I mean, we've talked a lot about preserving culture, but until you know we uh, we can make the culture is relevant to this young generation, it is hard to preserve the culture. But as you can see here, we can start to see the younger generation take pride in their uh, in their traditional cloth, in the uh, in this kind of weaving, and it's it's very uh, it's really beautiful. Uh, so we got a chance uh, to do some pre uh, presentation uh, about this project as well. But here uh, in the bottom line of the uh, bottom of the images is the work of Bian. Bian was mentioned before by Ibulini in Ibulini presentation. He's one of the Indonesian well-known uh, uh, fashion designer. He's one of our donors for this Sumba weaving houses. And yeah, after the visit and after this project, he also bring the inspirations from the weaving of Sumba uh, to become uh, yeah, the main inspiration to his latest collection. 
And I think, yeah, it's beautiful to bring the culture uh, to this day's uh, fashion. And these are just a quick uh, recap on our next project. So uh, after Sumba, we found out that Indonesia actually have a very diverse, not only in architecture, but also in weaving. So more, a lot of potentials uh, in rebuilding the, the weaving houses so that the people can also uh, pres preserving their culture, their, their weaving while preserving also the architecture. This is in Gela, different types of weaving. And this one in Alor, also different kinds of weaving, different uh, motifs, different colors. And this is our last uh, effort, we can say. Uh, so started in 2008, we also held an annual festival here in Jakarta, in the in the capital city. So we we want to introduce more. So not we know that it's hard to reach those you know you know remote villages of Indonesia, uh, remote islands of Indonesia. But we can bring them to Jakarta and we can bring the traditional uh, cloth, the, the beauty of the weaving and introduce them more to the young people. And so we do uh, a simple fashion show. Most of this uh, lady you, you find here is architects working in our firm. So they wear the traditional clothes and it's, yeah, it's beautiful. In 2022, different themes. Uh, these are the, uh, the, uh, weaving cloth of Ngela, different vibes, different colors. But yeah, it's a vibrant celebration. And this was our, our last one in uh, uh, Alor Night. We said uh, our annual festival here in Jakarta, where we introduced the beauty of the Alor uh, weaving uh, cloth to the people here in the capital city. So yeah, I think that's the story uh, from us. So as a closing message, I think we just want to say that we started as a stranger in Umanu Santa. We started as a stranger even to our culture, ourselves. But the journey uh, with Umanu Santara, I think, has taught us to be, you know, the true preservation happens when you are taking part with the community. And we hope that it happens also to the young generations today that we want to celebrate our local wisdom, we want to learn, we want to grow for it, and yeah, we're hoping for a better future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barani. We have such a uh, huge admiration for everything you're doing. And I think what you said is so right, that you're doing it with joy. So that's the most important key to all of this. Thank you. So it gives us a lot of hope. Thank you so much. And it's textile crazy years in our area, crazy about textile. Yeah. This is like a dream, you know, this is amazing. When they all line up and they become a new pattern, it's it's beyond beauty. Thank you yeah. so much. You should visit Indonesia soon then. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you.